Hi everybody! I thought it would be useful to do a quick video tutorial on circular motion. This is very similar to the homework problem and it's one of the proficiency quizzes that was given last week on Friday. Now the thing to keep in mind about circular motion is that the only new physics that we're doing is that we have an acceleration vector that is no longer pointing in the direction that we're going or opposite the direction we're going. So in the case of circular motion, your acceleration vector, the centripetal component of the acceleration vector, points towards the center. So it lies along the radius. Okay, so here's the radius of the circle. The acceleration vector A doesn't have to touch the center of the circle, but it does have to originate at the point we're interested in. In this particular um, problem, it says draw arrows representing the person's velocity and acceleration vectors on the diagram below, uh, diagram above at the position shown. And the person is located at the lowest point of the circular path. So what, if it wasn't clear that they were here, it is now. So the acceleration vector points towards the center of the circle, and the velocity vector, because it's clockwise, points in this direction, and it's always tangent to the circle. If it's clockwise, it points this way. If it's counterclockwise, it would point that way. Either way, it's perpendicular to the radius and to the acceleration vector. Okay, So there are your two vectors. That's part A. That's the only new physics. And then we calculate the magnitude of the acceleration vector with this equation right here, v squared over r, where v is the speed in meters per second, but we're given radians per second. So we're going to have to do something with that. Okay, so the next question says, what is the position of the person after three minutes elapse? We would like to find out the new location. So if it's turning 0.13 radians per second, how many radians has it turned through after three minutes? A lot of people had a hard time with that. It really wasn't supposed to be anything incredibly difficult. The only relationships that we had to know to solve that problem are things that should be very familiar to you. Um, and one revolution means that this point or any particular point has gone around one full turn and gone back to where it started. So one revolution is 360 degrees which is equal to 2 pi radians. So using that we can figure out what is the position of the person after three minutes. 0 0.13 radians per second, which is the rotation speed, times 60 seconds per minute, and we're rotating for 3 minutes. That gives us 23.4 radians. And I'd like to know what that is in revolutions. So we've got one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians, and that comes out to be 3.72 revolutions. That means that this guy goes around once, twice, three times, and another 0.7. I'd like to know how far, how many degrees is that 0.72. So Here's how I do that. The leftover number, the 0.72 revolutions, one revolution is equal to 360 degrees, and that comes out to be roughly 260 degrees. So what does that 260 degrees mean? If you start here and you're going this way for 260 degrees, here's 90, here's 180, 270 would be all the way to the x-axis if this is along the negative y-axis here. So we're just shy of that. So here's the new position vector. Okay, This is the position vector with coordinates with components x and y. So you can see y is really small. We're expecting that to be very small. Because this angle from here where we start to here where we finish is 260 degrees. That means this tiny little angle right here, that angle is 10 degrees. Okay, now what I'm going to do is use that information 
to calculate the x and y coordinates, I'll let you do that on your own. And also be careful, I was very sloppy in rounding this off, but it's about 10 degrees. Okay, let's go to the next part of the problem. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the velocity vector at 3 minutes. So the velocity vector is pretty easy to find the magnitude of. So if we have um, 0 0.13 radians per second, and we want to convert that to meters per second, we know that there are um, 2 pi radians in one revolution, and that it's 2 pi times the radius, which is 14 meters, in one revolution. So if you put all those numbers in, including this at 14 meters, then you get 1.82 meters per second. Okay, there's, your magnitude, there's the magnitude of the velocity vector, but now what we have to do is figure out the direction, and we can do that from our picture on the page before. So here's what our circle looked like. I'll try to do this neatly. So here's the circle, and here's the center of the circle. Our position vector looked something like this. I won't draw it in. Um, completely. And here is the x-axis. And in green, I'm going to draw the velocity vector. It's tangent to the circle. Okay, so there's the velocity vector at this particular instant in time, such that this is a right angle. Okay, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to move the x-axis up to here. As long as it's parallel to that, I'm allowed to do that. So if that's the 10 degrees I found before, this is 10 degrees, and if that's 10, there's your right angle is 90, that's 100, this is going to be about 80 degrees. And again, I encourage you to find the exact answer through sig using significant figures and not rounding off too much in each step. I just want to give you the ballpark here. So we would say that the direction is 80 degrees below the x-axis, or something like that. Negative 80 degrees would be fine too. Or if you wanted to do 360 minus 80, that's fine as well. Anything you want to do is fine with me, as long as you give some kind of magnitude and direction of that. Okay, so that's that part. Now the last part is to look at the acceleration vector and think about what the acceleration vector looks like at that same exact instant in time. So here's our circle again, here's our, look, um, our center, here's the x-axis, we're here. Our acceleration vector points like that. It doesn't have to reach all the way to the center of the circle. And now I'm going to draw in green the components. So if this is our vector a, here is the y component, here is the x component. Okay, This is a right angle. Um, I don't have to actually find the components. I do have to find the magnitude, but that's pretty easy. That's v squared over r, where v is what you found in the, in the step before. The v was 1.82 meters per second. Don't forget to square it, divided by 14, and you can do the math. Now, to find the direction is another um, step. What we have to do is to say, hmm, Okay, here's, we're going to measure it from the x-axis, so I'm just moving my x-axis up to here, and if, so there's my velocity vector. This was my radius vector, the one that goes, my position vector goes from the center to where you are. That was 10 degrees, so that's 10 degrees right here. So you could say that the acceleration vector points 180 plus another 10, so the acceleration vector, the direction, is 190 degrees from the x-axis. No components, nothing like that. You don't take the x component first and then find ax and then the y component of v and find ay. You don't do anything like that. 
You just follow the steps as I outlined right here.